Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am P.U. Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. In this third video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on custom Drupal 7 module development, I want to introduce you to hook schema and how we can actually create a table for our module that's automatically created when we install a, uh, the module itself and is automatically removed when you uninstall the module. Uh, that said, before we get started, you'll note I'm over at Toronto website developer.com slash store where I've actually got my video tutorial series available for sale. Uh, I've got my three up here, uh, advanced Ubercart, regular Ubercart, and uh, views. Hopefully I'll have the fourth one up, which was introduction to PHP, and then this one when it's completed. Uh, as always, greatly appreciate any purchases. They go to help me continue to develop these and keep them free and keep them available and frequent. Uh, but that said, if you're not interested in purchasing some, but would you like to help out, please give this tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. Always appreciate those, and those help to promote these video tutorials to new Drupal users. Additionally, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. You'll see my numbers continue to grow, and I love tracking that. That said, over at api.drupal.org, um, I've, I've visited here in a number of video tutorials, so hopefully you're familiar with it. But you'll see, I've just gone ahead and searched hook schema. Uh, this is a function, don't expect you to know about it right away, but it comes from Drupal core. Um, and just like in video tutorial two, we talked about hooks using the flag API with hook schema. This is actually provided by Drupal core. And what it does is it's run anytime a module is installed or uninstalled. So a bit of a, a definition here. Uh, you'll see this specifically is talking about when it's uh, invoked, you know, hook install, hook uninstall. Um, but the key takeaway here is we actually have to return a value and that's the schema definition for our, um, what our table is going to look like. Um, so whenever we do this, we want to make sure to return that right away. So let's go ahead and start creating some of that code. Um, the way that you do that or what, where you install uh, or where you uh, specifically write this function is in an install file. So what you do is in your, um, what are we creating here, a text file. In your module folder, you're going to create a new file. Uh, again, just like the other ones, you're going to call it flag application. And then you're going to create a dot install file. Uh, Drupal specifically looks for these, and so that's why we create it this way. Um, what I need to do is just have my, my editor here and just drag this in. Um, and you'll see that, of course, it's pulling up my code from before, so just pretend like I didn't have that. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. Yes, yeah, so I want to overwrite. So first thing I'm going to do is open up uh, my PHP tags here. So with those open, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this function signature. Where are we here? Hook schema, really don't need to copy it. Kind of a waste of time, but just so you're aware. We go function, hook schema, and remember, we're gonna return schema. Leave that, and then hook has to be replaced by flag application. And then as always, we're gonna comment this. So we're just gonna say implements hook schema, right? And so you might be wondering why am I returning the schema without actually declaring one? Um, that's because I'm going to show you a neat little trick uh, for actually getting the code to define a table. But I just want to make sure that I don't forget this return, uh, this return variable. So that's why I've gone ahead and I've added it. The easiest way to create a table and create this uh, schema function is to use PHP my admin. So what I'm going to do is uh, my web server, I can click on the little icon. You can't see me doing this, but I can, it brings up a menu that's uh, PHP. My admin is accessible there. And so once I do that, I will go to my browser where I'm now in PHP, my admin. So you can see my entire database here. Uh, I've got all of these different tables and you'll see down here, I've got flag tables, flagging and flag. And so what I want to do is I want to add a new table uh, for my module, which will track the status of my applications. So if uh, someone's is pending, approved, denied, I want to maintain that. So what I'm going to do here is create the flag application and number of columns is going to be two. Um, and the, the naming convention here is typically you follow, you know, what your module is called, right? So you'll see all of these different ones here. Um, you know, flag is a little bit of a bad example, but you'll see uh, what's a good example here. Rules, rules all starts with uh, rules and then uh, taxonomy all starts with taxonomy, views all starts with views. So that said, I'm going to go ahead with flag application. First thing I'm going to do is flagging ID. This comes from the actual flagging uh, table itself. So if you go ahead and you take a look at this, open this in a new table, uh, you'll see that flagging ID uh, is actually defined here. And if you check out the structure, uh, it's an int of 10 and then all the other stuff that we don't really care about. But uh, the big thing here is flagging ID is actual ID for the flag. So when you flag something, it has a specific ID that the flagging module uses. I want to keep that consistent with my module so that I can maintain uh, what the status is for that. 
So going back here, flagging ID, this is going to be length of 10. That's all I need to really add, except I want to add an index on this uh, for quick searching. The other thing I need to do is status. And so it's going to be int of one because it's really going to only be three values, zero, one, or two. Um, so we can go ahead and just uh, hit save on that. So with that, what I've also gone ahead and done, I can't remember if I showed you this in the first video tutorial or not, but we're going to go to project slash schema. And so this is a nice module which will help you when you're defining your own tables. So go ahead and grab uh, the most recent version. At the time of recording this, I have 1.0 RC1. Um, you're gonna install that. Uh, so if you go over to modules, you'll see if I type in schema here and I'm using module filter here, that's what's giving me this nice little dropdown and filter list. Uh, I've got schema installed. And then if I go over to structure, I can go to schema and I can go to uh, inspect, I believe is what it is. And so here, You'll see we have unknown. Uh, here are all your different tables for what the schema looks like. Uh, but you'll see I've got unknown and our flag application is actually being defined here because there's no install file which actually has this. So schema looks at all the different install files, looks at all the tables, compares them and tells you what is unknown, what haven't you done correctly. So I'm gonna copy all that code. And then I'm gonna go back to my file here and I'm going to paste all of this in. So now I've got schema flag application is equal to an array. Uh, so that's great. That meets the needs that we were talking about before. And I can clean all this up. And so what I want to do here is just take out these to-dos. So uh, main description for the table. So this is the uh, flag application table to track the status of flags. And then flagging ID. So this is uh, flag IDs as defined by the flag module. Right, so the status here is uh, status of flag applications, zero uh, pending, one approved, two denied. Right, so I can go ahead and save that. <clears throat> so now what I can do to test this to make sure it's actually working is I can go back to my site and I'm going to reinstall my module. We did this before, you should be familiar with it. I can go ahead to flag applications, scroll all the way down, reinstall. And now you'll see that I've uninstalled, reinstalled, haven't gotten any errors, that's great. And if I go to schema and inspect, you'll see now uh, flag application isn't here. If we actually scroll down, you'll see that it's actually properly defined. So uh, not getting an error there, that's great. And then if I go back over to my local host, I'm just gonna reload my page here. And I'm gonna scroll down to flag application. I'll go ahead and browse this. And you'll see here, uh, I'm actually getting the description up here, the flag application table to track the status of flags. Uh, so I know that this has been uh, updated when I uninstalled or when I did the, the Devel reinstall, it uninstalled the module, which deleted the table, reinstalled the module, which recreated the table uh, and used my schema, uh, hook schema. Uh, so that's it. That's all that's required to actually create a table in Drupal. Uh, you'll see this is the proper way of doing it. We're using hook schema. So uh, Drupal knows about the table. Uh, if somebody goes ahead and we contribute this module back and they install the module, they'll get that table created as well. In the next video tutorial, what we'll do is we'll actually start adding the values to that table so that when something is, somebody applies, it's automatically populated that and we'll use that uh, hook API from the flag module in order to do that. So um, like every other video tutorial, if this helped you, please leave a comment. Let me know. Thumbs up. Always appreciate those. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much and take care.